Harrison Graham and Chase Sr. with you here on Any Given Thursday by Chat Sports. Let's get you caught up on the latest on the Warriors, including that on James Wiseman, Chase. I know you've been all over this story and his kind of rehab here. Are we getting closer to uh, a return here? Uh, let's talk about Mr. Wiseman. Yeah, a bit. getting closer to James Wiseman returning to the floor, has not played since April when he went down with that torn meniscus in his right knee. So you pair that with the fact that the Warriors absolutely love this kid and really the moves that they've made as an organization backs all of that up. So according to NBC Sports Bay Area, the Warriors never really entertained the thought of trading away James Wiseman. He's been floated around as a trade candidate because if you include him in a trade package, he could get a lot back. Yep. Now what the Warriors did was they fully invested in developing him before and after the injury because... Obviously, they're high on the prospect who's still in his early 20s. That's why they drafted him at number two overall out of Memphis ahead of LaMelo Ball. So they changed the player development staff to cater to James Wiseman, and they actually hired Dijon Milijevic, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, from Europe. And he moved to the Bay Area all the way from Europe, and the main goal in that hire was to make Wiseman a star. So really, he has been appointed as the player development coach for James Wiseman. Here's what NBC Sports Bay Area had to say about that kind of organizational transaction He's best known in American circles as the coach most responsible for the development of the Joker in Denver, the reigning NBA MVP and the most comprehensively skilled offensive center in the league. It was that background that attracted the Golden State Warriors. They paid a handsome price to lure him away from a head coaching job in Serbia where he had two years remaining on his contract to be an assistant in California. This is all pretty telling in my opinion. And if you've seen video of James Wise been going through some of his rehab on the court going up against a guy who's about seven foot 260 pounds it's him and this is what good organizations do Harrison this is how good organizations operate they want the best out of their employees they want the best out of their athletes and they're willing to exhaust all of the resources to extract the talent out of that player and that's simply what the Golden State Warriors are doing with James Wiseman so really this is telling on a bunch of fronts didn't want to trade away James Wiseman they're still high on him they've invested in his player development and they still think in the long term, maybe even this year, he can be a high-level impact player for this team. I think the Warriors have done a good job of staying in title contention mode while not compromising their future. Yep, uh, I agree. And Kaminga, Moody. They weren't going to punt on Wiseman after one year just because of an early injury. I like that. Now, you know, if we're sitting at the next All-Star break or uh, trade deadline next year and he's had more injury concerns and you can get him for a win-now piece, maybe that changes, but I think – They've seen enough from him last year to see how he plays when he comes back, see how he is next year, and then, you know, maybe things change down the road. But I do like that they are committed to him. Can James Wiseman be a top 10 big in this league? That is our question for you. Type Y for yes, type in for no. Let us know what you guys think on this one. Maybe a little rich for top 10? Yeah, yeah, I think the hope is that James Wiseman is a top 10 big, but if he's not, that's still okay because you surround him with a bunch of really good shooters like Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and a bunch of other high-level playmakers like Draymond Green, Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody, and some of the other pieces on this roster. Speaking of the other young pieces on this roster, Dub Nation, we know you love Juan Toscano Anderson, NBA All-Star Weekend coming your way from Cleveland this weekend. Familiar face, going to be competing in the dunk contest. So I want you to get into the comment section right now. Spam JTA to wish JTA, Juan Toscano Anderson, good luck in the, dunk, in the dunk contest. He said the other day, that's all I've been thinking about over the last 24 hours. So do that right now. And if you're watching, hey, we're going to break down these NBA buyout candidates. Let's get into our updated NBA buyout candidates, Chase. Goran Dragic has been bought out by the Spurs, so he is free to sign elsewhere. Uh, we'll see if and when he does sign. A lot of other names to keep in mind here as well. A lot of suitors for Dragic, who is an all-star with a bunch of playoff experience. I really think he's going to help move the needle for a playoff team out there, depending on where he does sign. John Wall could get bought out, but for him, making a lot of money this year, so does he agree to that buyout? Dennis Schroeder with the Houston Rockets after getting 
getting traded there in exchange for Daniel Tice from the Boston Celtics. Could also be a guard who can start or come in off the bench. I really like Gary Harris. Same can't be said for DJ Augustin, but Gary Harris is a really, really good player. And I think as a three-level scorer coming in off the bench would really give you good depth if he's bought out, if he signs with another team. Uh, Woj's team's in the mix. Uh, is this for uh, Dragic, Dragic uh, as we sit as of now? Brooklyn, Chicago, Golden State, uh, also uh, the Clippers, Lakers, and Bucks. Now, people are like, hey, Dragic was at the Heat-Mavs game the other night. He played with the Heat forever. He's wanted to play with Luka Doncic. Ah, you never know. Maybe those teams are some dark horse possibilities. Uh, I do think he's for sure going to latch on with a contender chase. Uh, as we progress toward uh, that March 1st deadline. Yeah, and with some of those teams, Portland Trailblazers, you know, they trade away Norman Powell. He goes to the Clippers, but now he's out with that broken foot, so they're in need of a guard. I think that Dragic on the Lakers could really help them offensively, although Russell Westbrook last couple of games has been playing very well. Golden State, he gives you really good depth. Lonzo Ball still out. Alex Caruso turning the corner with his injury, but Dragic there seems like a solid fit as well. I think the New York Knicks, should be in play for Dragic's services because they desperately need a point guard and somebody to just calm down the offense late in games. Just don't think he's going to sign with a non-contender and uh, yeah. the Knicks are not contending this year. John Wall doesn't sound like there's a lot of momentum for him to agree to a buyout. Of course, he's making over $40 million. There's another year on his contract worth $47 million. So, you know, we'll monitor that and see if something changes there. But uh, I don't anticipate him agreeing to a buyout. Maybe something happens this offseason via trade or uh, a buyout there, but uh, I think he's uh, just going to hang out this year. It was great to see him come back off of, uh, off of a couple of injury plague seasons last year and play well with the Houston Rockets. Hasn't played a game at all this year after last campaign, averaging 20 and a half points per game. Gives you a lot of the same athletic traits as a Russell Westbrook, sometimes breathtaking in the open floor. Not the most efficient offensive player, but a guy who can really push the tempo, push the pace, and really play make for you. I want to see good players on the floor, and John Wall's a good player. We haven't seen him on the floor this year, though. Who is the best buyout guard that is out there? I, I think if John Wall became available, he's the answer. Dragic? Dragic for sure currently. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Let us know what you guys think on this one, the best NBA buyout guard on the market. Now, we got some of the best hoodies available on sale for you guys at chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie. Hoodies for all 30 NBA teams, a lot of them on sale as well. Go check them out, chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie, whatever your favorite team is. Some of these player team combos too, the Ja Morant with the Grizz logo on the front, that's a clean one as well. Different style jackets, I love this Hornets 30K look Ubre. as well. 30K Ubre, uh, could be 40K soon, who knows. Chatsports.com slash NBA hoodie. Go check them out. Whatever your favorite team is, they'll have something for you. Link will be in the comments and in the description of this video. Uh, let's go to the wing spot, Chase. Uh, a few names to keep in mind here. I think this is the weakest position group of the NBA buyout candidates. I frankly don't like any of these players. At one point, I was a fan of Jeremy Lamb, but this year he's been awful He's's as evidenced by the numbers we're about to show you. Rodney Hood. Just doesn't really do much for me. Kevin Knox, a bona fide first round bust, got traded to the Atlanta Hawks in that trade for Cam Ruddish. Neither of those players are playing. Thomas Sadoransky gives you a little bit of size at that wing spot. Kent Bazemore, I think his best days are behind yeah, him as well. Finished. Now, Jeremy Lamb certainly has pedigree. He's been in the league for a long while. He's had a couple of good moments, a couple of good years, but this year hasn't really played all that well. Seven points per game, two and a half boards. 37% from the field and sub 34% from distance. You take a look at a player like him, you compare him with the Kevin Knox. Do you take an opportunity and a chance and a swing at Kevin Knox, who's the younger player, but hasn't been able to show anything? I think Tom Thibodeau not playing him early in his NBA career has really impacted his confidence. It's weird. Knox, his first year, year and a half, wasn't bad. Looked like a guy who would be a solid rotation player, but once Tibbs got in there, he was not a Tibbs guy has not been the same. Um, you know, Jeremy Lamb, like you mentioned, uh, is certainly a guy who's had a couple of good years, has been a floor spacer, but you've kind of seen that a lot this year in the NBA. Guys just having down shooting years due to the new rules. Some say the new basketball. I don't know how much I buy into that at this point in the season, but uh, I tend to agree. I think this position group is definitely among the weaker ones uh, when you look at some of these buyout candidates. Will Kevin Knox ever 
work out? Will he ever turn into something? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I hope he's at least hitting the gym, uh, right, J Producer Jeremy? At least, at least work out once or twice a week. I hope he's doing that. Y for yes, N for no. Will he ever turn into something? Uh, I hope we're working out at Chat Sports. I think we're doing pretty well. We're closing in on 280,000 subscribers. We're actually less than 200 away. Hey, maybe we can get there on this video. Hit that sub button. Uh, spread the word. Let's get to 280,000 subscribers. If you want more NBA coverage, we are the channel for you here on YouTube. Uh, we'll keep it moving here on today's uh, buyout candidates video. Uh, let's look at some of the bigs here. Uh, a hot name right now, Chase, is Robin Lopez. Yeah. I think he'll have some suitors. No, and of the position groups here, we talked about the wings being the weakest, Harris, and I think the NBA buyout bigs, the strongest of these position groups. Yeah, you can say that Goran Dragic, John Wall are very good guards, but the depth here and the players that you can get for teams who are front court needy, I think these guys are very good options. Robin Lopez, Juan Hernan Gomez, Paul Millsap, we'll see if he hangs on with Philadelphia. Didn't play poorly in his debut in that blowout loss against the Boston Celtics. DeAndre Jordan, I just don't think he can really give you much as a center who can't do anything except hang around and hover around the basket. DeMarcus Cousins in spurts on some nights can be a pretty solid playmaker. You look at what Robin Lopez has been able to do this year, I think he's the top big who could be made available by far, averaging almost eight points per game, high level defense, solid rebounder, decent rim protector, shooting around 57% from the floor. He is a career around 70% free throw shooter, that number sub 60 this year. But for a playoff team, if you're able to bring in Robin Lopez as your backup big, I'm talking about yeah. the Golden State Warriors of the world, and he can be a backup to Kavon Looney and James Wiseman, if Wiseman continues to struggle getting back onto the court, Robin Lopez could be a very, very nice player there. I think even a team like Dallas who needs some Dallas, protection. Dallas, Philadelphia losing, behind Joel Embiid. Yeah, Kristaps Porzingis. I think he could certainly help there. So I think he's a guy that's going to be able to uh, pick uh, from a variety of teams, assuming he does get bought out. Some other players, uh, maybe some lesser names, but still some guys that – are out there. Of course, Derek Favors, Ennis Cantor Freedom, uh, of course, who's been who got traded by Boston, then bought out by Houston. He's available. Gorgie Dieng, Moses Brown, who got waived by the Mavericks. Drew Eubanks is out there. A little lesser name here, but a guy like Derek Favors, Chase, uh, he's not having the year this year, but he's had years in his career where he's averaged basically double doubles. I think he could definitely be a backup big. And I get a team like Utah, who's, who's very familiar with him. Uh, would certainly be interested in bringing him on board. Yeah, no doubt. You know, he's playing for the Oklahoma City Thunder now, but at 30 years old, it's pretty crazy to think that this guy was drafted number three overall back in 2010 and never really lived up to those lofty expectations from when he was drafted out of Georgia Tech. A lot of people expected him to be one of the best bigs in the NBA. Instead of that, he's been steady. He's been consistent. He's been somewhat serviceable. There's a youth movement in OKC, and that's why his numbers are down. Still getting around 17 minutes per game, five points per five rebounds, shooting around 52% from the floor. He's not going to stretch his game out to the three-point arc, but if you want a rebounder, if you want an energetic presence, if you want a veteran who a lot of people respect and a pretty solid defender, Derek Favorites can bring that to the floor. So who is the buyout big that's the most talented? Who do you like the most? Let us know. I, I think it's Lopez because he's an instant Incredible defender. Yeah, me too. I mean, 15 minutes off the bench for a contender, I think, you know, similar to like a JaVale McGee in Phoenix, right? Like, just score around the rim and play defense. Like, that's that's all you really need out of him. Let us know who is the most, uh, the best big on the buyout market.